In the government's latest response... You must stay at home. Master of the house, doling out the charm. It's very important that everyone... Know that you are, you are not alone. So in this video, we're going to look at the properties and uses of hydrocarbons. Uh, why are they the way they are? That's the sort of thing we're going to have a look at. Uh, okay, so let's see what we've got. So our learning goal is to be able to predict trends. So how things are going to change, um, either not in time in this case, but as a organic molecule grows, as its chain gets longer, um, as well as make comparisons between alkanes, alkynes, and alkenes, the different um, groups of hydrocarbons, different functional groups. Uh, so uh, this is the vocabulary for the lesson. If I get you to pause this video, maybe hit subscribe while you're at it. Um, like, why not? Go nuts. Um, but yeah, pause the video here and you'll have the uh, just something to refer back to as we introduce new terms as we move through the, the lesson. So yeah. So molecular mass. This one seems pretty straightforward uh, and with a bit of logic you'll be able to work it out, but we want to be able to explain why uh, it is the way. So as the chain length increases, so as we go from... Um, one carbon to two carbons to three carbons and so on, we find that the molecular mass increases. And that makes sense because we're going one carbon with a couple of a four light hydrogens around it to two carbons with, you know, hydrogens around it to three carbons. So obviously the molar mass is going to increase, but the molar mass of alkanes is going to be greater than the molar mass of alkenes, which will then be greater than the molar mass of alkynes. So if we have a three chain, a three carbon alkane, so propane, propane will be heavier, it will have a heavier molar mass than propene, which will have a heavier molar mass than propine. And the, the real clue there is if we look at the if we look at the um, the, the uh, general formula, which is CnH2n plus 2, right? That's for an alkane. The general formula for an alkene is CnH2n. So there's actually two less hydrogens. So the difference in mass between, um, say, decane and decane, that's a 10 carbon, 10 chain carbon, um, is going to actually be the same as it will be between ethane and ethene. And the reason is because it has two less hydrogens. And um, we see that again, obviously, with um, alkynes. They have another two less hydrogens again from the corresponding alkene and four less than the alkyne. So the molar mass will decrease as we move from alkanes to alkenes to alkynes. So let's have a look at boiling point and volatility. Uh, so as the chain length increases, there's actually more um, carbons along, right? That makes sense. So there's more interactive forces between, or attractive forces between the two molecules. So this means to separate out, um, say, ethene or ethane from itself. That's what happens when we boil something. We boil it, give it enough energy to the point where it will leave. Um, so to do that, there's more, there's less attractive forces there that are between ethane than there will be between molecules of pentane, which has five, right? So ethane has two, ethane has two, pentane has five. Um, pentane, which has five, so it's a longer carbon chain with more hydrogens around. There's going to be more attractive forces between the molecules to hold them together. On top of that, they're going to be heavier. So because they are going to be heavier, it's going to be hard and have more attractive forces. It will be harder to separate those. And that goes for both melting point and boiling point. So the longer a chain is, the higher the melting point. And we see that, right? Like ethane exists as a gas at room temperature. Um, methane is good as a gas, but decane and octane, that's petrol. Like that's a volatile liquid. And as we get further up, they end up becoming solids and so forth at room temperature. So when we look between functional groups though, alkanes have a higher melting point than alkenes and again, alkynes. And the reason, well, so we'll stick with alkanes and alkenes. 
Alkanes and alkenes, the alkanes have a higher melting point. So when we move from alkanes to alkenes, we find that there are more forces because we have more free electrons moving around, right? So if we look here at a double bond, these electrons are actually going to be tied up in this section here. So here we have an alkane and alkene together, right? These alkanes, alkenes, sorry, have electrons really locked in to that double bond, so they can't move around the outside. On top of that, there's actually a bit of a bend here, which means the molecules don't line up perfectly together. So we start to see there's a bit of the, there's a higher level of um, forces between alkanes. Um, there are fewer dispersion forces between alkenes. So alkenes have a higher boiling point. And that's a bit tricky to get your head around there. Um, alkynes on the other hand, um, buck this trend, right? They have the highest melting point and boiling points. Um, and that's, or well, the highest melting points, we'll stick with that one. And that's due to the fact that they are linear. And because they are linear, those three carbon bonds lock it into place. It gets really hard to, to turn. Um, so we end up with these really linear molecules. We'll look at shape in a minute. And because they've got these locked into place molecules, um, they're actually able to line up a lot easier in a solid structure. So we end up with the highest melting points in that situation with alkynes. Um, and you can see it here, right? Like they're linear about this bond here. So we could stack these on top of each other. Whereas this one here, because yes, there's a double bond which stops these two carbons from twisting like this, okay? But it sort of gives you this bent shape. Um, you get this sort of weird planar thing where it sort of lines up like that, but it's it kinks out at the end. And so we end up with these sort of repulsions away from each other, which we just can't do in a linear alkyne. So alkynes have the highest boiling points, uh, melting points, sorry. Um, and the highest boiling points as well. You know what I mean? Like it all sort of sticks together. Okay. So shape, that's actually a big part of what we were just talking about. So we can see here, we get this weird tetrahedral um, bond about each carbon, which gives you these sort of pyramids. So they're a three-dimensional shape and they twist around a bit as well, which is what gives it the dispersion forces. Like it's able to move around and, and interact a lot. We get the ethene, which doesn't isn't able to, because of the double bonds, it can't twist. Um, so it gets this like flat planar and we see it goes, carbon, carbon, which then shoots out to have the hydrogens here because the hydrogens have, are a bit more positive on each other. So they want to be as far away from each other as possible. So that's their shape. Whereas the triple bond is this really linear shape and to get the hydrogens off the end or whatever carbon is there, as far away from the rest of the molecule as possible, it's a straight line. So it's a linear shape. So let's look at reactivity and polarity. Um, reactivity increases with the multiple bonds, and we see this down here, right? Here we have these single bonds, um, the electrons are able to spread around, it's not such a big deal. Whereas here in our alkyne and our alkene, these are Lewis dust structures, we can see that the electrons are actually held close together, and they're all negative charges, so it's a bit less stable. So the more, the more bonds there are between any two um, carbons, the more reactive it's going to be. And that's where the reaction will occur first. Um, so multiple bonds, as I said, the electrons are held closely together and their repulsive forces from each other make it want to split apart. So the reactivity goes alkynes to alkenes to alkanes. Now, as we can see here, we're generally talking about linear molecules um, with an even dispersion of non-polar covalent bonds. And that means our hydrocarbons tend to be non-polar. So that actually goes into their uses a lot. For example, um, as they're non-polar, they're excellent non-polar solvents. Water is a polar solvent. So having a non-polar solvent is really useful um, because that way things which won't dissolve in water will dissolve in oils and waxes. Alkanes tend to make up a lot of fuels. They burn really well. There's lots of energy stored in those carbons and they break down. If they burn cleanly, they're excellent actually. They burn into water and carbon dioxide, which is not perfect. I know that, but it's a cleaner burning fuel than other stuff. Um, so 
They're fairly stable. They are volatile, um, which means they're good for burning. So we like to burn um, our alkanes. Alkanes work really well. Alkenes, on the other hand, because they've had a double bond, we're able to exploit that double bond and turn them into polymers. Which is so we can get um, an ethene, which is, um, we see it down here, right? We have, here's our ethene. It's a monomer. And we can exploit this double bond and where it's going to break easily and join ethenes together to make really, really long chains. And that's what plastics are, polymers. Um, so alkenes are exploited as polymers. Our alkynes, on the other hand, there's a lot of energy stored in those three bonds. So they actually make quite excellent fuels or anything where we need to cause it to burn with an extreme amount of energy. That's where our alkynes are really, really useful. I hope that made sense. I know there's a lot there. So um, any questions, put them in the comments below. Um, hit subscribe so you can keep up with what we're doing. And we'll get back to you as quick as we can with any questions you've got. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye now.